welcoming week. This is recipes for welcoming. I know that many of you are logged into Facebook Live right now and logging into Zoom. We're gonna give everyone a few minutes to get started, but if you've joined us, feel free to add comments into the chat boxes. We love your emojis or any noise you wanna make in celebration of these chefs that we have today. My name is Angelina Kluthis and I work in the Office of Economic Opportunity for the City of Portland. Welcoming Week is an opportunity for all of our community members to feel like they truly belong in Portland, Maine. Celebrated across the nation and thousands of cities across the U.S., this is Welcoming Week. Many of you joined us last night to cook with Miat Catering and tonight we get to cook with Quiero Cafe, one of my favorite restaurants in Portland, Maine. Their world famous award winning rice and beans are what's on the menu for tonight. So we're going to get started and I'll just ask our chefs to introduce themselves. Carlos. Hola, mi nombre es Carlos. Eh, soy de Colombia. Eh, eh, co dueño de Quiero Café con mi esposa Alejandra. Ella es Marisol de México. Nos acompaña desde hace un año y medio. Nos ha ayudado mucho en la cocina. Es de las mejores eh, cocineras que hemos tenido. Eh, Los dejo que se presente. Okay, and I will do it in English, so because it's everybody's welcome. So my name is Alejandra Herrera. I have been in Maine for over 13 years. Um, six, five years ago, I married Carlos. We had some uh, big dreams, but we didn't think it was possible. But three years ago, three years and a half, we opened Quiero Cafe Saco, and a year and a half later, we opened Quiero Cafe. Portland because people were waiting for us and we're so excited to be here. Uh, the city has been really welcoming, so I'm uh, very excited to be here. Uh, last year we welcomed our son Rafael, he's nine months old now, uh, so that's a little bit about us. And what I can tell you it's about my soul. She started working since uh, last year when we opened Quiero Café Portland uh, because we needed more help and she's from Mexico. She is, she loves to cook and you can really taste it in everything we make. So we are so grateful to have us and enjoy what we're making. Um, thank you all so much. I do see a lot of actual questions coming in through the chat box. So many of you are curious about why we're doing the show in both Spanish and English. Spanish is one of the top languages spoken in the city of Portland, Maine. So this is a really great opportunity for our Spanish speaking neighbors to feel like they can participate. I will do my very best to ask questions clearly in English and we, I can always count on Carlos to help us out in Spanish. Alejandra is going to do the show with us in English so that way we get a little bit of everything. Alright, and so I do see a lot more questions coming in but these beans do take a while to cook and I want to get us started. Chefs, what do we need to get out of our meal kit to get started? All of you at home, I hope you have your orange bag, your meal kit. So what are we going to need to get the to get this recipe going? Ok, eh, del kit de comida recibimos hoy las instrucciones en inglés, en español, en siete clases de, idi de lenguas. En cuatro idiomas. Cuatro idiomas, sorry. En cuatro languages. <ríe> sorry. Cuatro idiomas recibimos nuestras eh, instrucciones para hacer los frijoles y el arroz. Vamos a empezar con los frijoles. Alejandra, can you just give us a, uh, tell us about this in English? Yes, so here you're going to get the recipes and the instructions how to make it. So we have the rice and beans and we're going to start with the beans and everything you will have it in the meal kit okay and it comes in four languages so <laughs> everybody can try and pinch in okay lo primero que vamos a sacar de nuestro kit de comida es los frijoles frijoles negros esto alcanza más o menos para seis personas lo primero que tenemos que hacer es lavar los frijoles nosotros ya los tenemos listos lavados acá para cocinar so what he's saying is that the first ingredient will be the beans and it will come for a um, serving size of six people and we have to wash them and rinse them before to use them and they are already uh, done for us. Well, I do have a quick question, I'm sorry guys, uh -huh. I'm not a professional chef like you all. How exactly do you wash black beans in your own kitchen? Okay, <laughs> uh, siempre tenemos un colador La mayoría de veces tenemos un colador como de este glasas Marisol. Los ponemos ahí y los lavamos debajo de la llave. Los escurrimos bien y los lavamos debajo de la llave del sink. Ok, so you put them in here eh, under the sink and the running water and just wash them and rinse them and they are good to go. 
Thanks for helping us skip a step and save some yeah. time on the cooking show for all of you at home. You're welcome to try to wash your beans now and stay, stick along with us, or you can just kind of enjoy the instructions and cook your beans whenever is a good time for you. So what do we need next? We've got our black beans out. We've washed them. Next step? Next step, okay. Podemos empezar calentando el aceite para sofreír la cebolla y el ajo. So we're going to start with the oil and put it in the pan so it start um, warming up to uh, go with the next step. Ok. Tercer paso. Seguimos con la cebolla que en el kit de comida la encontramos y el ajo. So we find here the uh, yeah. onions and also the garlic. That is the next step to put into the pan. For those of you who drank this yesterday, it's that same head of garlic you used with Chef Aklilu, um, but you just need a couple of cloves for both of the recipes. So if you can just hack off. Do you need two cloves of garlic? Yeah. We, eh, sí, que, pero necesitamos dos dientes de ajo y eh, para, los, para esta cantidad de frijoles vamos a usar solo una cebolla de la que viene en el kit de comida, de la que nos sobró de la comida de ayer. And I do have a question coming in through the chat, um, but I, I, uh, it's how do you cut the onion? And so Alejandro, would you be willing to let us know about how much garlic and how much onion and then also how to cut it? And then we'll let Carlos chime in with how to cut it so in Spanish. So for the garlic, it's uh, three uh, garlic cloves, actually. And we cut them like small pieces, uh, enough to like uh, give it a nice golden color. And for the onions, in squares, so it's easier to cut them in like slices and then cut it the other way. Perfect, awesome. And Carlos, could you tell us how to cut the onions in Spanish as well? Okay, eh, son tres dientes de ajo. Me reivindico y sería una cebolla eh, picada. La picamos, cortamos en eh, pedazos muy pequeños para que todo se disuelva con los frijoles cuando se esté cocinando. Okay, what's the next step? Okay, the next step, eh, Marisol nos dice que es, tenemos el aceite, ya estará muy caliente y eh, vertimos todo el, el aceite y el garlic en la olla. So you have a couple of our questions coming in on the Zoom and on the Facebook Live and it's asking about COVID. How has your business been impacted by COVID? I'm sure the masks aren't a normal part of your everyday. Yeah. Eh, para, por el momento ha sido un poco difícil el trabajar separados de los compañeros en la cocina es muy difícil trabajar con el COVID pero nos las hemos arreglado gracias a, a, las, a las reglas que ha puesto el estado de Maine nos, hemos estado tratando de la llevar bien <risa> Before we get that answer in English we do need to get these beans in the pot Marisol is like just ready so our yeah. washed beans ya que está un poco cafecita la cebolla se le suelta el frijol para que se sofría un poco goodness uh, we have a business that it's a uh, a lot of takeout and we were doing that before so it hasn't been a big impact um, but it's just um, hard not to have people inside um, I don't know a little changes that we had to make but we manage and still afloat so. yeah and it looks like all food here is being taken care of really safely you've got gloves and masks and all of your workers are doing their best to stay to say as we say in Maine wicked fa a yeah. right <laughs> So, we got enough Dos, tres minutos, We pour the water in after two, three minutes of mixing the beans. Para que lo suficiente para que tape el frijol y pueda cocerse el tiempo que le dimos. So, like to cover the beans and let it cook for the time, like two hours, that pretty much take the beans to cook it. Y le soltamos la cucharadita de sal. 
and the salt we added a teaspoon of salt tablespoon i'm sorry no teaspoon teaspoon from salt to taste your choice yeah and that's, that's what i wanted to say salt to taste Posteriormente esperamos a que hierva. Después de que hierva, lo vamos a bajar, a, a, lo tapamos y lo ponemos a fuego lento. Solo esperar el tiempo adecuado, que es de una a, a dos horas, que se cocinan los frijoles y listo. Están so we just have to wait until they boil, and when they boil, you cover them up and lower the temperature. Awesome. So it looks like the beans are in a good place for us to get started, perhaps with the next. Phase. So we're not just cooking black beans today, you're also getting the secret recipe to the rice here at Quiero Cafe. So we can wait for that to boil and maybe get started with the rice. What do we need to take out of our meal kit for the rice? So okay. we need first ingredient, rice, of course. Oh, the bag is over here. So your bag should look like that. It's already been measured for you carefully by volunteers at Wayside Food Programs. Thank you so much Wayside for letting us use your distribution house and helping to get these meal kits out. And to all the Wayside volunteers for helping us to measure out these ingredients. So also we're going to need tomatoes that we already have all set up in there. We're going to need some garlic. Now we're going to have enough garlic, right? Yes. yes. Also we're going to need some onions. And salt to taste again. And also we're going to need some um, oil. <laughs> yes, like I would say, the secret touch. Um, the seasoning, like very Latin, Hispanic from Goya, or whichever you think it's the brand that you want to choose. But this is the one that we use and we oh, yeah, recommend fine. it. Okay. And so, uh, Carlos, would you be willing to tell us what we need to take out of our meal kit now in Spanish? I know we've got it all on the table. If you'll just run it through really quick. Ok, el principal es arroz, arroz blanco eh, preferiblemente, eh, eh, tenemos eh, ajo, tomate, en este caso necesitamos dos tomates, aceite, cebolla y el toque secreto que son condimentos goya o maqui, condimentos latinos. Like Mag that Maggie brand and the Goya brand, I've seen them all over the world. You can mm. find them in India, you can find them in Niger. So I feel like maybe the rice and beans, even though it feels truly like Latino, perhaps it also is, no matter where you are in the world, rice and beans is a part of your culture. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, principal, uh, la licuadora. Uh -huh. The blender. The blender. So, so what's the... N Beans aren't boiling yet, so it seems like we might have time to take that next step and get the rice ready to go. Is that all right? What do we do first? Okay, uh, Marie, claro. La arroz? Sí, señora. Bueno, ya que está todo los productos ahí, ya lo tenemos todo picadito. Everything is ready to go. Ponemos todos los los productos en la licuadora. We grab all the ingredients that we go into the blender like the tomatoes, the onions, the garlic, the maggi. and okay, vamos poner el maggi. Okay. opening the ingredients, secret, have some people in. La pasta de maggi. So you use the whole amount that comes in the kit. Okay. It goes right to the Entonces vamos. No, se muele así. Esta muele sin agua. Esta licuadora. Sí. So that's ready to go. No, 
si necesita un poquito de agua. No. Poquitito. Si le va a echar. Un poquitito porque esta Pero no. 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 We do have a question coming in from the audience. If I don't have a blender at home, can I still make this rice? And what would I need in order to make the, how would I do it without a blender? It's because we, for the kitchen, we have a different blender, and it uses a uh, liquid. Achacar bien el tomate, la cebolla, todo. Para eso necesitaríamos entonces picar un poco más la cebolla en trozos pequeños, el ajo, todo picarlo y machacar bien el tomate. Y se hace una pasta de tomate. Perfect, that sounds like a perfect solution. If you're tuning in from home, you can skip the blender step, but if you do have a blender, that's a great way to get it all chopped as finely as possible. I feel like I'm. Ya que está esto, se hace la misma medida de arroz y la medida de agua. So from the same, um, the water that you were adding to make the rice, just we added a little bit uh, to be able to blend it. And now it's like all mixed in, so just waiting on the next step. And I do want to take a quick moment to cut to our beans, which seem like they've come to a boil. If I recall correctly, after the beans come to a boil, we're supposed to reduce the heat and put a lid on it. Put it? Yes. Yes. Ya se tapa y solo se espera que se cocine más rico. Ya, ya lo bajamos. Ah, okay. So you're welcome to put a timer on for two hours. The longer the beans cook, the more delicious they are. Una... Está revisando, tenemos que estar revisando más o menos eh, cada 30 minutos que el agua no se seque. Si ves que el agua se está secando con los frijoles, agregarle un poquito más de agua. So what he's saying to keep an eye on the beans, if you see like uh, the water is reduced a lot, add a little more. And he's saying like every check over every 30 minutes, uh, just to make sure like it has enough water to keep um, soaking like getting all that water, no so they don't dry out. Y que los frijoles no se vayan a quemar. So they don't burn. Ok. Ok. Bueno, aquí ya tenemos también el arroz lavado. The rice is already washed. La medida que está aquí es la medida que está acá. Ya está posteriormente lavadito. And Entonces, we wash it the same way we wash the beans in just a strainer? Yes. Igual. Exactly. Sí. Entonces ponemos nuestro aceite a calentar. Esperamos a que caliente, ya que está caliente, le soltamos el arroz. So we added the oil and let it cook, uh, like heat up a little bit, and then when it's warm enough, hot enough, we add the rice. Lo sofreímos por dos, tres o cinco minutos por máximo. Depende de cómo venga el arroz, porque hay veces tiene muy, muy, muy quebrado o oh, ahí está enterito completo. 
So it seems like you might have to be doing this to the rice for like three, four, even five minutes. And how do I know when it's done, Alejandra? Eh, when, eh, when it's done, eh, when, <laughs> <laughs> when it's done is when you when you can see the the rice is almost gold, like a brown. So. So just a few more minutes, yeah. I guess. Uh -huh, yeah. I've never done this stuff with making rice. This could be why my rice is never as good as it should be. And you want to make it like a, a what's the word? A, like all the rice got into the, get the oil. Like to get it evenly. That's what I wanted to say. So I do actually have a lot of questions coming in from our audience here that's joining us on Facebook Live and on the Zoom. Um, lots of people want to know, is this a family recipe? Is this a combination of your family recipes? You come from two totally different cultures, Chile and Colombia, here in Portland, Maine. All of that must have influenced your special recipes. But plus a Mexican chef in your kitchen, that must be a lot of different things. How did you guys come up with some of your recipes? Eh, la rec las recetas de, de nuestro restaurante Eh, han sido una mezcla de muchas banderas de Latinoamérica. Mi esposa es de Chile, yo soy de Colombia, Marisol es de México. Eh, siempre tenemos la aprobación de todos los del de restaurante. Tenemos gente de El Salvador, tenemos gente de, hemos tenido gente de Honduras, Guatemala. Entonces siempre tenemos la aprobación de toda, eh, toda clase de banderas de Sudamérica. So what he's saying is that we uh, put recipes from different countries. Um, he said the countries where we're from, Marisol from Mexico, I'm from Chile, Carlos from Colombia. Uh, so the recipes are pretty similar within the countries, uh, but we try to make food that um, it's from one country, another country, my country, and then a little bit of everything. And just a quick peek at that rice, it's turning like a golden it's like it's getting a nice suntan in the oil, so that's that's how we know it's almost ready. Yes. Huh? So this is the this is what came out of the blender plus the same amount of water as the rice, right? Or double the water. No, but it's the same the same type of water. Yeah, so it's the same type of water. And the nani and the adobo is kind of salty too, right? So yeah. for a lot of people, they won't add as much salt. It just yeah, depends yeah. on. Esperamos lo mismo a que hierva. También le bajamos para que se cocine a fuego lento y lo estamos chequeando para que no se nos pegue. So same thing. It will boil and then we turn uh, put the cover on turn uh, the turn way down yes yes uh, and then be checking once in a while uh, how it's doing so you guys have this like fancy six burner stove but it seems like this would be possible even in my apartment right you yeah. just need two burners and some patience to make this recipe yes. happen yeah like all our recipes like uh, from where we're from and our parents the way they make it our mom so it's uh, the way we grew up with yes. yeah so no need so for a commercial kitchen mm, to yeah no not at all food. yeah very homey very homemade so you're actually getting a ton of compliments right now so i can see them just like pouring in through facebook people are asking about your empanadas that they're the thing my favorite thing on your menu and also it seems like julia's favorite thing so julia thanks for chiming in Super curious if you could tell us a little bit more about some of the other items on your menu while we wait for these rice and beans to cook. Yeah, eh, nosotros eh, tenemos casi 15 sabores de empanadas y eh, usamos en tres en tres empanadas en tres clases de empanadas usamos el arroz y el frijol. El, tenemos la empanada de frijol que va con arroz y frijol eh, y guiso. Tenemos la empanada de pollo que va con arroz carne y tenemos la empanada de pollo que es arroz pollo y tenemos otra clase de empanadas que es puerco, chorizo, eh, tomate <laughs> So he's saying that we have uh, around 15 different uh, styles of empanadas 
Uh, he's saying the rice goes in three of them, the frijol, that it's a vegetarian. Also we have, and we can make a vegan uh, without doing the egg wash. Uh, we have the chicken and the beef, and those are made with the rice. And uh, so you, what you were saying more about like the menu, uh, we started at the beginning with empanadas and a few other items, and eventually we will add in more things uh, as we started to grow, and knowing what people were willing to try, and new recipes, uh, as people, uh, join our team uh, we decided to do more things that are appealing to them and to us to our customers uh, so that's how we started growing the menu and one that is very popular is the patacon it's a green plantain that we smash and fry and then uh, different toppings on top uh, so we have uh, uh, veggies and it's gluten free and uh, it can be uh, vegetarian and vegan and then we have the for the meat lovers uh, that's one of our biggest sellers and also the lunch we call it like that because we were open for lunch and our biggest meal of the day is during lunch time so it has a uh, protein rice and beans <laughs> uh, so you can make it at home now uh, a mini salad and then it comes with sweet uh, plantains that i like to eat at the end so kind of like my dessert Carlos, ¿quieres share a little bit about maybe your favorite lunchtime menu in Spanish? Um, de de nuestra de nuestro menú para mí el mejor eh, ítem de, del menú es nuestro perro colombiano hot dog colombiano es el mejor de todos eh, viene pan salchicha queso mozzarella derretido después le ponemos un poco de piña dulce salsa de piña dulce eh, papas like matchsticks matchsticks, ya yeah. and the queso fresco mm -hmm. eh, huevos de codorniz salsa rosada es mayo and pink salsa and eh, ketchup lo único que le falta es la, el postador o el colombiano creo sí señora postador <laughs> <laughs> la colombiana para, para terminar nuestro perro colombiano So I know that for many of you, you are cooking at home this rice and beans and you've got your timers going and it's almost dinner time. We do want to take a few more minutes here to field a couple of more questions and make sure that everyone's comfortable with their rice and beans. The big question is, it looks like you didn't dirty very many dishes. What is your secret to keeping your kitchen so clean? We need to know so we can all have clean <laughs> kitchens like here at a cafe. Having an amazing cook. <laughs> 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 a todos los eh, muchachos que trabajan con nosotros darle mucho amor, respeto, respetarnos entre todos y que todos hagamos un buen trabajo para agradecerle a todos los clientes que vienen diario a comer acá al Portland Saco Main ha sido muy eh, agradecidos con nosotros por la comida que les estamos ofreciendo queremos ofrecerle lo mismo a ellos And because it's welcoming week and we want to make sure that everyone feels like they belong in Portland, Maine, the big question that I have for you before we close out is uh, maybe each one of you could share in the language of your choice something that makes you feel like you belong here in Portland. Hay algo especial de Portland que te hace sentir que te perteneces aquí y si podrías compartirlo con la gente que está mirando este Facebook Live con nosotros hoy. Yo? Sí, tú, y tú, y tú. Nuestra comida? Dar a conocer nuestras culturas de cada nuestro país, eso es lo que más alegra y que las mismas personas de aquí les demos a conocer nuestra comida y que les guste y que se vayan felices. Perfecto, gracias. ¿Y Carlos? Para mí, eh, la verdad, eh, nos, nos entusiasma mucho y nos emociona mucho que nuestra comida sea bien recibida, mm -hmm. que la gente le guste y que nos agradezca cada plato que le damos, eso nos tiene muy contentos. Y es verdad porque yo también me siento muy a gusto de que la gente acepte lo que nosotros estamos ofreciendo, que nos traten bien, que quieran, que ustedes escuchan eh, que la gente viene, nos busca, nos escriben, eh, eso hace que nos sintamos súper bienvenidos, de verdad. So it sounds like food is the thing that really brings us together, that you can always make someone feel comfortable about your culture through food. And that's why our theme, Recipes for Welcoming, is a great way to help our neighbors feel welcomed into our homes especially when we have to stay far apart. And knowing that we've got some great 
immigrant owned restaurants for welcoming week there's no place i'd rather be than hero cafe today yesterday with niat catering we're learning all about healthy great foods that are always available at wayside if you don't know how to get access to food check in with wayside they can give you great information especially if you're experiencing food insecurity in these difficult covid times if you're not experiencing food insecurity and you want to learn more about these restaurants, you can always check out me at Catering on Facebook and of course Quiero Cafe. I highly recommend you come down and you have some arequipe or an empanada or all of the above. There's nothing on the menu that I don't love. Thank you so much for joining us. Before you sign off, we'd love to invite you to say something that makes you feel like you belong here in Portland, Maine. We want to take this feedback and share it with the city. We all belong here in Portland. Thank you so much for joining us for Welcoming Week. Before we go, it is time to taste the beans. The, um, we did have a special pot of beans just like Rachel Ray, a famous cooking show situation. They pre-made it. And so we're gonna stand a few feet apart from each other and try the beans. I know you can't yet, but when you do get a chance to try yours, and then we'll just all kind of take a quick little break and we'll go sit at a table and try some of this amazing food. Um, Josh. Can you set up the camera really quick over there and maybe do a quick tour of the restaurant and we'll meet you over? So it's now time to finally try the rice and beans. We are lucky here because Marty pre-made some beans for us. For those of you at home, you still have a few more minutes to keep those things cooking. The rice just finished up, so the rice does finish up a little bit earlier. Um, how does it look so far? Do you guys approve? Is this pretty much on recipe? Sí. Yes. Si. Sí. <laughs> yes. Algunos cambios o ajustes con el sazón de pronto? De pronto con el goya el sazón goya o el magui es eh, del de, de gusto de cada persona se le puede bajar o aumentar el, el sazón uh -huh. eh, so what he was saying is about the, the seasoning eh, same as the salt it can be added to taste so maybe a little le less than what eh, we added it smells incredible and I hope your kitchens at home smell as incredible as this does I think it's, it's time to give it a try, which is the highlight of welcoming week for me is all of the food that I get to try. I hope you guys are enjoying it too. I'm gonna go all in beans and rice together. Mm. Mm. It's incredible and healthy and easy mm -hmm. and cheap and delicious. Mm -hmm. It's like everything I want in food. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Any final comments from you all about Kyoto Cafe that we want to share with our audience before we let them clean up their kitchens and take their rice off the stove? <laughs> mm, I'm just grateful to be part of this uh, for thinking of us. Uh, we're happy to share what we make and we make it with love. Um, we are just a happy family, um, just had two of us plus a friend and now we have grown to like 12 employees that we get together anytime we can and make it more uh, homey. Uh, so that's important to be in a foreign country and make it your own. So very thankful and grateful. We're really grateful for Kiro Cafe for having us. Carlos, do you want to give a quick uh, summary of that amazing explanation in English for it now for our Spanish listening audience? <laughs> no, eh, solo queremos decir gracias a, al estado de Maine, a Portland, Saco, por, por recibir nuestra comida. Lo que decía Alejandra, empezamos eh, solo Alejandra, una amiga y yo, los tres en un negocio. Y ahora en el momento tenemos 12 personas, 13 personas de solo planta y eh, cada vez estamos creciendo más. Gracias. Well, I hope that everyone in the audience will be joining you soon here at Kyoto Cafe in Deering. And if you're even farther away in Saco, you can always try that out. But there's no place like Kyoto Cafe on, um, on Deering Avenue in Portland, Maine. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, if you're joining the hashtag conversation, this is Welcoming Week. This is, uh, today we're doing recipes for welcoming and of course, uh, in this difficult COVID time, please stay the course, wear your mask and stay safe everyone. Thanks for joining us for a digital, virtual welcoming week celebration.